This is the closest I've come to giving up on an organ road trip. Heavy drizzle is about to turn to heavy rain, and I've just been over to see the church of St George's in Dameron. This is part of the New Forest National Park. The trouble is, the car park is not the best place to leave your car because it's very remote, especially with a load of equipment in it. So I'm having to park in the main village and trolley my equipment up to the church. But you know, we organists are a hardy bunch. You know last week I said I couldn't have chosen a better day for this road trip when I was at Bowerchall? Well the opposite is true here. I'm in Dameron and this couldn't be any more damp. I've hardly seen a single road without a road closed sign on it and most of those are because of the flooding. Nevertheless, I am here to see an extremely ancient building. Some of it dates to 1090. There's also a bell with the inscription I was cast in the year of war, plague and fire, referring to the Black Death, the war with Holland and the Great Fire of London in 1666. So we have an extremely exciting church today. There's also a very, very lovely instrument inside. And the only way to show you those is to walk from here in the village to the church in pouring rain with a trolley. How do I look? Feeling rather more damp, here we are at St George's Church in Dameron. For all the inconsistencies in the shape of this church, the materials that it seems to be built from, it's very beautiful up here on the hill and extremely imposing. And I'll tell you something that makes it all the better. This church is famous locally for an amazing carpet of snowdrops. And the advantage of this weather is that I'm here completely alone to gaze upon them. Look at this. I'm hoping that my camera holds up here. It's not really supposed to be used in the rain but it's been a trusty workhorse for the last few years. So I'm sure it won't mind, just this once. The church has just held its snowdrop weekend. So I'm sure they would have seen these wonderful snowdrops 
in the February sunshine. Meanwhile, I was out at Bower Chalk in completely different weather conditions. But isn't that part of what makes the climate in England so amazing? These buildings take on a completely different atmosphere. going inside before I get absolutely drenched. It's very refreshing actually. Leaving the rain and the wind behind, the turbulent weather gives way to the serenity of a beautiful church, sections of which date to the 11th century. I must comment on the organ at this stage. King's College, Cambridge, in miniature form. Certainly one of the most beautiful that I've seen in a village church. and a surprisingly bright and comforting chancel on a day like today. Still fairly austere. Remnants of an earlier building. Absolutely fascinating. If you go for a wander and you discover a church like this, it's fantastic the moment you step inside and you see the interior of a building you've never seen before in your life, completely different to any other you've seen in your life, and a building you may never see again. So you have to make the most of it. The pews date to 1859, some of the newest parts of the church. This building was fairly sympathetically restored. It retains its Norman essence. And one of the most magnificent sections of the church, a huge monumental west window, which draws light into this building. This church, like many others, had a west gallery, which was removed by the Victorians. You'll be familiar with those if you've read Under the Greenwood Tree. You'll also be familiar with that dispute between the band of musicians who accompanied services up there in the gallery and their replacement with a single organist. My main interest today was, of course, this small but magnificent and very beautiful pipe organ. The gold pipes on the facade are actually dummies, so they don't make any sound on their own. But it is one of the most convincing and beautiful village church organs I've ever seen. And it's time to see how it sounds. Let's have a look at this instrument. First of all, just one keyboard, a very basic organ. Below the keyboard is a very small pedal board. The only purpose of that pedal board is so that you can couple notes down from the manuals. In other words, the bottom section of the keyboard can be played by the feet, just to help the organist when there are big stretches required in the hands. The problem with it is that it's very small and the keys aren't lined up in the same way that a normal organ's pedals are. So it's almost unplayable, certainly with shoes on. Did you see that going down there? This is an indicator of how much wind there is. It's not a light switch, unfortunately.
Bird's French Courant in A minor. It's actually written for a kind of small harpsichord, but I've built up a repertoire of pieces to really show off village church organs, and that's one of them. The organ here at St George's was apparently purchased for about £20 second hand and brought here just after the end of the First World War from its first home on the south coast. It works beautifully for Baroque music because of its very simple specification with only a few sounds, but its primary function was of course to accompany hymns. Words in themselves often have very little meaning when we read them on a page. It's only when we combine them with our personal circumstances, our environment, how we feel, the landscape, the architecture around us, do they gain huge significance. Lone flower, hemmed in with snows and white as they, but hardier far, once more I see thee bend thy forehead, as if fearful to offend, like an unbidden guest. Storms sallying from the mountain tops waylay the rising sun, and on the plains descend. Yet art thou welcome, welcome as a friend whose zeal outruns his promise. Blue-eyed May shall soon behold this border thickly set with bright jonquils, their odours lavishing on the soft west wind and his frolic peers. Nor will I then thy modest grace forget, chaste snowdrop, venturous harbinger of spring, and pensive monitor of fleeting years.
it's still just about dry enough to observe the spectacular scenery outside St George's. I'm so grateful to a viewer who recommended this church to me in the comments of a previous video. It's been a fantastic visit and I've really enjoyed it. Please remember that these trips don't fund themselves. All of the equipment I purchase and presumably will need to replace is funded by myself and of course all of the time spent researching and preparing these trips takes its toll. So I've inserted that little PayPal link beneath the video so that if you enjoy it you can donate a small amount to help me out. Thank you very much. On that note I hope you have a wonderful week, not too damp I hope. And here's one final beautifully evocative melody for the season, Rockingham. <laughs>